I like to uh, spend a few minutes talking about hand planes and ways that you can get the most out of your plane. Now, <clears throat> you can buy a really premium plane like this Lee Nielsen, but the going price now is about $450. Not everybody can afford that. So most people end up doing going either one or two route, one or two routes, and that is either they go and they get a used, like a Stanley, like this one here, off eBay or at a garage sale or an estate sale, and you can then soup it up. I'm going to show you some ways you can maximize the performance of these guys, or else you go to, like, say, this plane from Harbor Freight, and it's not very good, but there's some things you can do to really make this work well. And so I feel like there's two main things that you can do. Two, two of the most important things you can do to, to maximize the performance of your plane is A, to get the sole flat, and then the next is to upgrade your iron and your chip breaker. So I'll talk about that and I'll talk about some of the, some of the, um, things that we sell that can help you with that. So the first thing is, um, and I, actually at the end of this video, I'm going to show you how I would go about flattening the sole in a simple way and also, uh, a kind of a, a nice way to flatten the back of existing irons. So, but first of all, let's talk about the iron. Usually the irons in these old, these, these planes are pretty thin and especially this Chinese one, this one here is, the steel is probably really good, was probably garbage, but it's about 90 thousandths thick. And this chip breaker is kind of, it's a bent chip breaker, so it's kind of formed and then it has a flat edge on it. And you have to either work this chip breaker to get it flat or uh, just upgrade your chip breaker. So, um, also this Stanley plane here, if you look at this, this one here, it's pretty rusty. So I could spend a lot of time messing with that chip breaker and messing with that iron, but you know what? I just don't want to. And also, look at how thin this iron is. This thin is a, uh, this iron is 70 thousandths thick, 78 thousandths thick. So we can get a much thicker iron than we can get. And obviously that'll help the performance of the plane. Plus you'll get uh, better steel if you change the irons. Uh, something that's harder that'll hold an edge. Take a keener edge, it's easier to sharpen and it'll hold the edge for a long time. So the first kind of class of uh, blades you can do is this is just a Tatels brand. It's our Tatels basic brand. This thing is super thick. It's it's a 0.13, so it's thicker than a quarter of an inch or an eighth of an inch. Uh, Rockwell is between 60 and 62. We have them in either two inch wide or two and three eighths inch wide. For, you can either use them in a number four or five, or you can use the wider blade in a number four and a half, five and a half, six and seven. So that's kind of what we got. So yeah, two and three eighths wide. So this is a nice option. These are under 20 bucks. These are a great deal. So this is a nice option to have. We also have the Tay Tools Premium brand. Now these are really nice. These are made in the same factory as the Wood River planes. And if you want to see how they fare, go to uh, Wood by Wright has a YouTube channel. Look for January second, two thousand twenty-one. He does a plane blade review, and he reviews like twenty different plane blades, all the premium blades. And the Wood River came in third behind the Lee Valley PMV eleven and Lee Nielsen. So it's it scored very well. So a couple things about this iron that are really nice are, A, the iron is super thick, and you can get it with or without a chip breaker, but the chip breaker isn't one of those bent formed ones. It's actually machined, so it's very nice. And so it's, and it's super thick. Look how thick that is. The chip breaker, thickness of the chip breaker is also important. This is like 125, and these chip breakers here are like 0.74. So you've got another 50 thousandths in thickness with a chip breaker. The nice thing about these is that they will fit most of the um, Stanley planes, the old Stanley planes. Remember, it's a chip breaker that's important. So make sure to take some measurements of your existing chip breaker. Go to our website. We have the dimensions uh, of our chip breaker. Make sure they're close, and then you'll know that it works. And a couple things you'll need to do is you'll need to make sure that this little yoke here, this little thing that this thing has to stick up far enough to catch your thicker iron because they're it's just only going through a thin iron, so you have to make sure there's enough sticking up, a little more than an eighth of an inch sticking up so that it can grab the chip breaker. And on this one, I had to open up the mouth a little bit because it was just too tight, but that was pretty simple. I just put it in my vise and I just filed down. I drew a line, I scored a, uh, scratched a line with my awl and I just filed down to it and it just took a few minutes and I had opened up the mouth. And now I can use a much wider blade. And a lot of people like to have a really tight mouth to help with chips, uh, but you know what? I find that the number one way to deal with uh, tear out is to put my chip breaker as close as I can to the edge of the blade. I mean, sometimes just a little sliver of, of steel is all I need. And then the chip gets broken up so much quicker and it doesn't hardly, no there's hardly any tear out at all. So there's the two 
Tate Tools ones. Now, you can buy a Hawk replacement blade for about 100 bucks. This setup would be about 100 bucks, And these are well less than half that if you buy the chip breaker and the blade. So this is actually, these are actually a really good deal. Um, you can also get another brand of plain blade. And these are from Germany. This is called the Kuhn's Blades. And these, we have these in stock. We have these with or without a chip breaker. Now, this has the, the form chip breaker, but it's still nice. Um, it's made from German steel. It's not made in China. And the Rockwell's the same, 60 to, 60 to 62. Um, and the price on these is really good, too. Uh, it's in the $20 range. It's not bad. We have a few of these left. We have actually some of these that are inch and three quarter, which you can use with a number three. Uh, two inch, for, you can use with a number four and five. Or two and three eighths, which you can use with four and a half, five and a half, six and seven. Um, they also come with a chip breaker. So these are available. Um, so those are the three main brands of plane blades for bench planes. But another thing that I kind of want to talk to you about is that, you know, kind of a rite of passage um, for hand tool woodworkers, at least. I think it's first is making your own bench. And the next is making a functional hand plane. So this is a Kronov style hand plane. And this is it's just a really nice performer. This is one of my favorite planes. But it takes a special iron. And you can use these hawk blades. You can get this hawk blade and a chip breaker. I really like a chip breaker with my planes. Um, it helps break up the chips. But this is about 100 bucks for this little chip breaker blade setup. But we do have some Coons blades. These come from a different, whole different uh, plane that Coons makes. Um, they were actually closing out, so we don't have very many of these. But it comes with a nice chip breaker, super thick blade, and it has this screw here. Let me tell you something. The screw here on these on these hawk blades is down low, which means you have to actually route a groove in your plane down here, which is an extra step, and it's just one more thing that can go wrong. This screw is up high enough that if you make your plane, the screw is above the top so it doesn't get in the way. Also, and also, when you make your own planes, you want a short blade if you can. If you had a long blade like this sticking up, just going to get in your way. So these short blades are really nice for making your own making your own planes. And another thing, when you make your own plane, I know it sounds intimidating, but there's a book out there. This is fantastic. This is Making and Mastering Wood Planes by uh, David Finch, or Fink. And it's been republished by Lost Art Press. This is fantastic. You can tell how much I've used it. I've gone through this many times when I've made several planes, but it walks you through step-by-step step how to make a plane in it really makes it simply. So uh, I highly recommend this book. So kind of kind of sum everything up. You can take, you can buy an expensive plane here, Lee Nielsen, very expensive, or you can pick up a used Stanley or whatever record plane and you can rehab it. Two biggest things you do, make sure the sole's flat, upgrade the plane and the chip breaker. And I'm telling you, you will take the performance of this plane to a whole new level. You can also buy these cheap planes at Harbor Freight. I think our Lowe's sells them now. You can get all kinds of different brands. And you can upgrade the plane and you can flatten the sole and you can make one of these planes a really nice performer. So we have different blades, Tate Tools Basic, Tate Tools Premium. We got the Coons, kind of standard blades. And we also have these Coons short blades so you can make your own planes. So now I'm going to run over to the table saw and I'm going to show you how I flatten the plane sole and how I flatten the back of uh, plane irons. Okay, I'm at the table saw. I used my table saw to do my initial flattening. Um, you can use a granite plate or... Sometimes people will have little cutouts left from putting a sink in a granite countertop and you can, that's flat, but I find this works really well for me. And I have found that I, that the, using these Cubitron stick it discs is the quickest way to, to fit, to get my sole flat because they cut so fast. They're so aggressive and they last a very long time. So I'll stick three of them down here just side by side. I'm using 180 because that's just what I have. If I have, I checked this before I did it and it's pretty flat. It doesn't need a lot of work. But if it was really bad, I might start at 120. And if it was really awful with a big bow, you could start at 80. But I just simply stick these discs down, and they don't come up. They're, they got a film backing, so they won't tear, so they stick really well. Then I, I take my plane, and I put my blade in it, and I make sure to tighten the blade down, but I retract it so it's not going to touch the sandpaper. That's important because it, it will change the, the flatness of your sole if you do this without the blade in it. So I take that, then I've actually marked this with a magic marker to see our progress. And now I'm just gonna go back and forth. And this is, and you can see, I mean, you can just see how much metal I'm removing, all this, all this dust. That's really good. So see that? I have got a good start to flattening this thing. So now I'm just gonna go here, go back and forth. Sometimes you can turn it around too so you don't get it 
off. Going all the way to the edge. Now this plane was right out of the box from Harbor Freight. So you can see that I need a little work in the middle here, but it's generally coming along pretty nicely. Okay, so here we are after about two minutes of lapping. And this is what I got. I changed the paper to 220 because it just wasn't cutting fast enough for me. Um, but you can see there's a little bit, of, a few scratches here. There's a few scratches here. And I checked with the, put the straight edge and this thing is flat. So this thing's ready to go. So this is uh, 120. You could go maybe up to 220 if you wanted to really lap it and get it super smooth, but don't, not necessary. So this is a, would be a nice, uh, the, the sole's now ready to work. So now let's look at how um, I would flatten a plain iron. So I have a different way of doing plain irons. I've done this a lot and it's it's a nasty job. It's a dirty job. It's a lot of work. It's probably one of the hardest days in the shop is when you're flattening planes and plane blades. But I'm just going to show you this. This is a MagJig 150. This thing is phenomenal. You put it on the end of your plane and it gives you a handle and it holds really well. And not only does it give you a handle, but the magnetic attraction of the magnet will hold itself down to the table saw bed and make your job easier because you won't have to push down as much. And then if you need to focus your uh, pressure in one certain area, you can actually move the magnet from one side to the other and it works really well. So let me show you how that works. So same grit, I'm gonna start with 120. I put it down, see how it sticks down? And then I can just push this thing back and forth and this thing will grind off metal very fast. So now let's take a look and see how we did. So now when I look at this plane blade, this part is now flat. I don't have to really mess with this part. Really, when you flatten the back of a plane iron, you only need to get the very tip of it flat. So now I'm ready to take this uh, to the finer stones. So remember, this is just take, doing the rough part, and that's the hardest part. If you were to try to do this on a sharpening stone, you would just load the stone up, and it would just clog it up, and it would take you forever. This greatly shortens the time it takes to maintain a plane iron. So um, there you have it. Ways to flatten the sole of your plane and your plane iron. Go pick up a replacement plane blade from Tay Tools and take that whole plane you got off of eBay, that Stanley plane or your grandpa's plane or go buy a cost-effective plane from one of the big box stores and soup up this plane and get to making some shavings. <laughs>